a gay kiss for doing the interview, and uh, Dreb's here. Say hi, Dreb. Hi, Dreb. <laughs> there you go. Anyways, uh, we'll be right back. Here's Brandon's song list. Some fear. Long hairs in here tonight. What's the problem? It's gotta be. This is 1980. Can't you afford a fucking haircut? Why well, all you assholes who stand back there sucking that overpriced shit come up here closer? They wouldn't let us play here tonight, they thought. On account of we didn't play here for a long time, and they said the last time we played here there was a riot. So you're not gonna disappoint us, are you? I see a little motion up here. This ain't no fucking country club. These are all probably gonna spend the weekend in Frisco, weren't you? I know you were. It's all gonna go away for the weekend while they install the hot tub. Aren't you? Yeah, next time don't bite so hard when I come, okay? Hey, fuck you. You only spit as good as you suck, yeah, shit. Eat my fuck, asshole. Just wanna see my fuck me. Fuck you.
Hello, WXXX, the home of alternative rock and roll. Can I take your request, please? Hey, man, can you, like, play Fuck Hollywood by, like, the anti-heroes? Well, I, I don't think that would be appropriate. Well, why the fuck not, you trendy music industry radio station piece of shit? One, two, fuck you! Fuck Hollywood! Fuck up today! Fuck the million dollar movies with nothing to say! Fuck the sips and fuck all the stone! Fuck Rambo and Sylvester Sloan! Fuck Jane Fonda and Shirley MacLaine! Fucking John Wayne Fuck that for stupid and fuck that too And if you don't like the song then Fuck you Fuck, fuck, Hollywood Fuck, fuck, Hollywood Fuck, fuck, Hollywood today Fuck Sony Bono and fuck on share Someone hit a woman with another chair Fuck Michael Jackson and Dow Molester Fuck Rock Hudson and Schwarzenegger Fuck the actors at the presidential ball Fuck over and under Sidney Hall Beat up the beast with a stupid bitch Chick it out with a woman sucking dick
off. Sorry I cut your song list. I'll come right back to it. No, I, that's cool, man. I want to want to keep John waiting. I got to get uh, everything queued up. Did you hear what I said? Ooh, so. Or do you want to wait a little bit? Uh, we should definitely give it an intro somehow. <laughs> okay, we'll wait a minute. Let me get you yeah, on yeah. screen. Let me get you on screen, John. Cool. I don't know if you see. I, I'm waiting for my. There we go. Can you hit yep. your camera emblem? I don't see you. I see you. Uh, huh. Move your my cursor. My camera emblem should be on. Move your cursor over the screen, and you'll see uh, like a bar pull up, and you'll see a camera. Click on that. I see. Here we go. Yes. All right, John. All right. Yeah. Hey. I was seeing the top of your, like, half a head, and then... There I am. <laughs> yep. This is oh, my okay. co-host, Brandon. He wasn't, with, he wasn't with hey, us man, last time. On? And Drub is in the, uh, inconvenienced right now, so she'll be oh, yeah. joining us shortly. So She hasn't been drinking and vibing lately or anything or whatever in the studio? <laughs> uh, here and there, she does. She indulges. Yeah. 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 Uh, we my uh, major dark in this and everything is I'm trying to have a light over me and like whatever. <laughs> Last time I was at a, a desk in like uh in, in my front room. Now I'm in like my bedroom with a computer and everything, laptop and like going just be casual and kick back and I feel like I'm it. talking to one of our West Coast friends, man. Seeing yeah. you with the blonde hair, man, I'm expecting you to get grab a couple surfboards behind you and stuff, <laughs> man. Uh it no, took you're... about three bleach jobs just to get it to this point when I was like going for the Damage City Fest when I finally decided to do something for a change instead of like being like, you know, normal normal geeky John John Stab, whatever. And like I decided to like blonde it out and everything. But uh um is it is it like bright enough? Oh no, it's real good. No, that just is that's why I was saying that. That's yeah. why I said that because I just think you know, the picture's pretty good, man. We were just there she is. All right. Hey, Drab. Hello. 
Hello. She's got her mic turned off. There she goes. She, she, she go. can talk. Oh, he, he always turns my mic off. <laughs> Hi, John. Yeah. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Hey, what's going on, Drew? Oh, oh I, I deal with the elderly with dementia and once having, like, a dementia problem. Uh oh. Uh, Sometimes I think it's we played fun. with those guys once. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like Cleveland or something. <laughs> yeah, that that's probably where it all began. No. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. What's going on? I watch you on Facebook. I like your posts. Oh, thanks. Thanks. It's funny. I, I was going to talk about the fact that uh, there's a site called, like, No Hipsters Allowed, and this one guy is really kind of down on me, like, making fun of one of his favorite bands, uh, Pearl Jam. And, uh, you know, and it's just like, come on, man. It's like, and if I can't make fun of, like, you know, where can a person, like, make fun of Soundgarden and not get, like, you know, made fun of himself and stuff? And, exactly. And they, they take things so seriously sometimes, these people on, on, these, on these sites. Except for one page I'm on uh, called Desert Island Dickheads that is uh, a great page. And they, like, they have the balls enough to, like, uh, basically be, be uh, you know, anybody can write about anything and whatever and as long as people aren't ripping into each other like you know then then they're not going to get booted off the site or whatever off the page but like this one guy like uh named eyeball jackson he's he runs the page and um it's just cool when i read about it and everything i looked at it through a friend and i was like man you guys definitely seem to like have some like serious balls over there and stuff that like nobody's going to get super sensitive and cry if you make fun of their favorite bands or whatever and i mean the guys all like like things like grateful dead and i i constantly make fun of them on there and stuff and say like you, you know, have to yeah have totally to. Are they like you know like they're they're all talking about where where bob weir is now and like we're all they're all like you know like oh i hope he's okay and stuff and i'm like whatever man can't we just say that uh you know that that we that, that you know we're worrying about him but you know and let's don't, you know, and like, you know, just like do our own thing. It's like, thank God he's not doing another tour with Rat Dog or Cat Dog or whatever the hell is like, you know, that he's doing his thing. But definitely not into that scene. I constantly refer to the Teen Idol song uh, from the DC band of like, I'll be grateful when you're dead, so don't stick around too long. And the whole, the whole like, you uh, can't deal with those guys. Not my thing. But, but I, 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 I definitely like, let people talk about them and and let them do their thing but uh the ones that are too sensitive like the guy with the pearl jam it's like look man i'm not gonna convince you to go to like you know to like start like you know believing the stuff that i i'm into and stuff and you're not gonna change my mind change my opinion so like you know i i respect you for for your passion that you write about and stuff and everything but it's like man pearl garden you know not my thing man yeah, right. I got something playing in the background. Yeah, I got to figure out some, uh, some cartoons. Some Herculoids is going on. Do you remember the Herculoids? <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Aren't yeah. they, they, they like sort of like uh, strong hemorrhoids or something? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Funny. We're back to you. <laughs> I think Tesco wrote That's a song funny. about them or something. Probably. Uh, probably yeah. yeah. He had little little like Herculoids that. hanging from his. Uh, <laughs> From his hands, like with his little, with his little rubber satans. <laughs> so hey, little rubber satans. Oh man, I got the, I got the good stuff, man. Tesco. <laughs> so, uh, how All right, are cats. How, yeah. Yep, there's a cat somewhere. There's yeah, my cat is in the window of my bedroom right now, and he's probably just like, "Papa, you're, you're what's up with you, man? You're really freaking me out here." <laughs> it's like, don't don't get into those weird voices, and please don't don't imitate like death metal, because you know that freaks me out, man. Don't, please don't do that shit. <laughs> I'll have to find a death metal video with cats that are. Just, <laughs> oh, I've know? heard of one. <laughs> you got everything with cats these days. Oh, they totally do. Yeah, well, maybe we'll do More something. More power to them, man. I'm like, uh, me and me, it's like me and my, my, my meow girl, we're like, uh, you know, we, we believe in, like, uh, we follow the, the great chairman meow, and uh, that's part of our, like, you know, our religion. Yeah, I remember you were... We're meowists, yes. Your, your cat is, uh, what is it, catastrophe? Catastrophe. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, he hears his name now, and his ears are, like, going, perking around, going, like... Talking shit about me, man. What's going on? 
Yeah, so how long has it been since you were on last? About what was it? Winter time. So was that yeah, I was just telling someone today. I was telling someone I was I was uh, working with, which uh, was really nice to get a little bit of work. I was like, basically doing uh, cleaning up uh, two of his storage spaces, his garages so that he had all this like furniture and tools and all kinds of junk and clothing and whatever. And it was kind of a sad story that like his his fiance that used to work in a club uh, club asylum in D.C. years ago, like. She apparently like um, committed suicide, and like they lived together uh, for like three years in, in a three-bedroom house. And then when basically like that happened, he just like you know I gotta toss all my stuff in like storage spaces and stuff, and I'll get back to it and whatever. And he he now like basically runs like about three housing projects and stuff, and he might be put me on as like a foreman so I can watch over the deadbeats so they won't steal the tools and stuff and all that. And trust me. Um, so uh, I was just telling him today, like you know, the God, like I hope the weather's a little better tonight because it was it was really raining pretty hard like this afternoon, but it's all done and it's cool outside. But like I said, the last time I did this whole Skype show, it was like, yeah, um, it was like winter time, and apparently I broke the uh, world's record for being on on the uh, ED fanzine show online for like you know for like three or four hours or something because it was awesome. kept like cutting me off back and forth it was like we kept getting <clears throat> both of us kept getting cut off like every time it was like oh fuck not again shit you know the connection's really bad yeah and, sometimes the, you know skype just acts up yeah that's why i say don't believe the skype <laughs> yeah, right. hey so uh we had a. Do you remember me relaying you the question that we had on the board? Yeah, yeah. Basically, um, uh, those shows were only recorded on um, on uh, video. They were never like recorded like actually like you know like we hooked up a bunch of sound equipment and everything and went through like the boards and stuff and all that. So some of the some of the video footage is like really good quality. Like my my um, my old bassist and my uh, my band called the Factory Incident and uh, my guitarist as well. Um, Carl and, um, and and Sean actually they got a bunch of film students to film the uh, the original like uh, GI reunion with like Jay Robbins and Pete Moffat and all that and they had like five heavy duty like movie cameras and everything so it looked really really nice footage and you know we're gonna use that somewhere down the line we're gonna put out something with it like we haven't figured out exactly what you know what we want to do with it yet but there was even like captured uh, you know s separate interviews with all of us except for. Uh, uh, Jay Robbins couldn't be found. James Robbins, my friend, like he he was running all around the club and doing stuff, and I think he was checking on his kid and and uh, with his wife and everything. And like he was not he was not part of the uh, one man interviews, like where put us in a room and like talk to us and let us yap about GI and stuff and whatever. But uh, um, more more or less, like I would I would love to have some of that uh, that footage definitely come out as some some kind of uh, thing, like maybe documentary style or something or whatever and there is like at least about a clip a really good clip of about like one song um, I, that's online that they posted on yeah. YouTube somewhere and I was looking for it today and I I've was like, got something for yeah, you that would be the one I'd want to I'd want you to play well I've got but, um, one from, has, like like I said five cameras I've got one from like uh, what is it yeah. 2012 uh, black cat and it's on Vimeo and it's yes. really good, man. It's really yeah. good. It's two songs. I think it's Understand, and I forget what the other one was. Yeah, yeah, I forget what the other one was. But um, it's funny because the guy I was working with today, too, he was like, he knows GI from way back when. And, and uh, he, the funny thing he was saying is he said that, like, well, you know, it's like when he used to go to shows, it would, like, either, like, well, we could go to the Minor Threat show and then, like, you know, have a, have a bunch of guys give a shit for, like, doing drugs or drinking or whatever, or we could go to the... You know, we could go to go see government issue, and like, they don't care. They like let us drink and whatever and stuff and all that, and not gonna give a shit about that. And I'm like, yeah, well, the whole thing like straight edge and all that nonsense has been so twisted out of out of proportion and everything. And like, Ian's totally sick of even hearing about it himself. He's mm -hmm. like, you know, I wrote this song a long time ago, and then basically everybody twisted it all out of shape, and I don't think anybody really got. Like what what it what it was even about like an anti-obsession thing and stuff. It wasn't telling you like don't do drugs and don't drink and don't fuck. It was like more or less like don't get obsessed with any of the shit. Don't let it get carried. Don't get carried away with it because you could like you know go down go down pretty hard. I mean we we all had friends that were like junkies and stuff and whatever and did drugs and drinking and all that and whatever. But it's just 
everybody everybody out outside of the DC area totally twisted that whole thing out of proportion and now people got like straight edge tattoos on their neck and face and butt yeah. cheeks and whatever I mean, that's so <laughs> it's like get up, get over this shit man it's a fucking song it's not a religion and it's not a movement you know as I said once before too I said if it was true about everyone in uh, DC back in the 80s that they, none of us like you know all of us in the punk scene like didn't drink smoke or fuck then we'd be like monk rock you know it's like it wouldn't be punk rock monk uh, rock and, uh, Jesus punk rock yeah we'd have like little like those bowl haircuts and like the little like uh, the Benjamin Franklin thing like I have like I always talked about like when I got little crazy haircuts back in GI I was like man I'm gonna get a Ben a Ben Franklin that's gonna be really cool have little granny glasses and have like the bowl Jesus. have like the one big like like circle ball like thing and the long hair you like can in the still do it head. man you can still do it oh yeah the Ben <laughs> when my hair starts to really go away I mean it's like it's starting to recede but like this whole blonde nonsense is like uh, uh, I, I for years it was funny when I worked at like this hardware store this little hardware store I knew all these people there and they were like you dye your hair all the time and I'm like no I don't and I haven't colored it and like since like I was like uh, I was on a honeymoon with my ex-wife or whatever and like and it was kind of reddish blonde, and I hadn't touched anything. And I was like, no, I'm just letting it be normal. And finally, we're playing this big, uh, you know, show with uh, the Damage City Fest that we did that, like, um, about, uh, uh, about, like, a few months ago or so. Like, um, we played with all these, like, huge international, like, hardcore bands. Like, I mean, Coke Bust, our friends, put the whole thing together. And it was like, uh, you know, so we got the original lineup of GI to do it and everything with, like, um, from Legless Bowl, which was really cool. It was just awesome to do that. But, man, if we want to play more shows, it's that Legless Bowl kind of original lineup. Like, uh, it was funny because my drummer who played with me, uh, Carl, he was like, man, we got to learn a few more songs, like, to put in there in the GI thing because if we're going to do, like, Legless Bowl, like, we're going to be killing ourselves, man. It's like all those songs are like about 10 seconds long and <laughs> super fast and John Barry my guitarist is like a guy like he's crazy punk rock I mean he's like he's about my age I mean about 53 now or whatever and stuff and, and but but like he hasn't picked up a guitar in years and when he did this GI show at uh, Damage City Fest and we like had to rehearse with him he changed his like chord structure every time we rehearsed it was like what the hell and like we're used to the way this pattern is and like my basis is like you know brian gay came down from chicago for the show and they flew him in and everything and then uh, my housemate carl played drums and it's funny like if you see any of that footage of the of the damaged city fest up there which i finally like i said I, I bleached my hair for that but it took me like three bleachings just to get like this color and now it's like starting to be like the roots are coming out so i'm like pretty soon like if i get a little like face work done i'll look like deborah harry so uh you know that'll that's my dream come true because uh blondie is always one of my favorite bands i love them to death but uh, hair is almost the same but, color um, as dino's from the tour yeah 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 it's funny uh, like um so if you see any footage of that it's like the fact that half the audience there, like, they came for this festival from all across the country, like, you know, some people came from, like, Spain and, like, Germany and whatever, and there was all these bands, like, in uh, England and whatever, and uh, and we get up there and we play there, like, after all these young hardcore bands have played and stuff and everything, and we're, like, one of the last bands of the night before uh, Crudos, and those guys are amazing. I mean, like, uh, you know, it's, like, the guys from, like, Limp Wrist and stuff, you know, like all gay hardcore band which is like that's got some serious balls to do that man that's like awesome and they were really cool people and they were a great fucking band but like um it, it's like we played right before them and people didn't know what to expect and like and and i said well this is the original lineup because some kids came up to me earlier at like the merch table and stuff and it's like i gotta ask is is jay robbins playing with you tonight and i'm like no no that's a different lineup and we're doing this legless bull thing we're bringing it back to like the original songs which is like from Legless Bull and their original demo, which most people don't know half of that song, of that stuff on there, and it, it's out there as a single and everything, and like, you know, floating around, but which someone sold it for like 99 cents on like eBay, and I was like, motherfucker, man, like, nah. you know, that's uncool. Like, if you're gonna put it on eBay, and it's like something that has like songs that people have never heard before by GI or some band, and you're gonna put it out for like 99 cents, I'm like, I think I should shove that fucking record up his ass or something. <laughs> I mean, like, but, like, if, if, it, it's just uncool to me. Like, I mean, fine, I, 
I, I, I can't believe Legless Bull went out there for like 750 recently. Uh, and I'm like, I've got it. it makes me think, like, should I sell mine? You know, I could use the money. I could definitely, like, maybe I could get even a little more and I could, like, you know, keep myself stocked in rent and cat food, you know, and yeah. stuff so for a while. And uh, that would be really cool. But um, but it's funny, if you look at the Standard City Fest thing, it's, it's hilarious that... Uh, it was like crickets, like you know, like you could hear crickets on stage or at the at the show because I'm like sitting there telling jokes about like uh, uh, you know how about like we wrote Hey Ronnie from the from the uh, like Flex Your Head album, uh, the sampler as like I said like everybody thinks that song's about like the president but it's mm. about that fucking clown at McDonald's and everything <laughs> and like you know and like and it was like you know and and things that are going on way over people's heads like. My uh, my my meow girl, my girlfriend, like lent me her uh, her her old Donny Osmond puppy love T-shirt. I saw that. She usually that. wears for like uh, for washing for like yeah, um, for uh, uh, for for doing laundry and stuff. And I'm like, man, I want to get something really just out there, like from the '70s or something, and like wear that on stage and stuff. So I wore it under this other shirt. When I took it off, I was like, yeah, Donny Osmond kicked hard towards <laughs> ass and stuff and whatever. And I was like. It's just dead silence, you know. It is just like, oh, I must be talking to the wrong, like, uh, you know, percentage of people or something. You know, it's like, wow, you know, because these kids were like too fucking young to even like know Donny Osmond was. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna uh, try to get you, John? I'm gonna try to get you a Mandrell's sister <laughs> shirt. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would wear that. What? You'd rock it, wouldn't you? I would. I would. <laughs> Better than that, I'd wear the Dixie Chicks because I wrote a song about them. Actually, history repeated. I mean, I wrote this song about like how they got threatened by like you know their own fans and the, and everybody like thinking they're so anti-American, they're terrorists and all this nonsense and shit. And it's like <clears throat> amazing that we can live in a country that like you know years after like the fucking Beatles like you know and they're burning records that they still burn your fucking albums I'm like burn my albums make me more popular man <laughs> that's cool yeah. I mean I want that kind of publicity but like you know that was just like ridiculous that, like, everybody turned on this like yeah. pretty mediocre twangy country rock country band you know it's like that uh, you know maybe they're talented and whatever what they do and stuff but it's like I just, when I saw that documentary, that Shut Up and Sing documentary, and I was like, wow, like people threaten their lives and stuff and everything and threaten their family and everything. It's like, you're a fucking terrorist, you know, and everything. <laughs> it's like, and that total uh, douchebag uh, of country western or pop or whatever, not even country western, it's more like um, Teletubbies for cowboys or whatever. <laughs> it's like all safe and family oriented, it, um, it, Toby Keith goes out and does this whole bullshit about like oh, yeah they're anti-american they're against the president and everything that's like that's it's awesome that the dixie chicks made these t-shirts of like f-u-t-k and whatever and you know and it's like yeah that <laughs> rocks man well, we'll give credit man they're a little more punkier than i expected yeah that's cool especially the little cute one that sings for him and looks like she always goes to raves or something <laughs> you know, but, uh, she's blowing yeah. up <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, it's funny. I, I was listening earlier to the um, to the Gay Kiss guys, and it, it's like, and for a young, like punk rock touring band, those guys sound like far too organized, like with their <laughs> schedule and everything. I'm like, we're on the fucking road and GI in the '80s and stuff, and we're in our 20s, and it's like, yeah, where are we gonna play next? Uh, where what? Uh, we're playing Goofy's, like a comedy club in Minneapolis, and like. Grant Hart's gonna be there or whatever or something like you know like and and then it's like who are we playing with the next town we we're playing with uh, Stinky and Schmeiser and uh, and they're both gonna cover the MTV theme hardcore style or whatever it's like you know it's like that was a running joke it was like you know like oh tonight we'll play with Stinky and Schmeiser because we <laughs> played with them in uh, Richmond these two bands like and they did do a hardcore version of a rendition of the MTV theme and it was like what the hell they both covered it in a very weird hardcore style and so but those guys sound like far too organized to be like in a, a touring punk rock band it's like I, I listen to them and go like man those guys have their shit together it's like uh, we didn't we totally didn't you know it's like we're like just looking through our schedule and wherever and it's like going like oh shit you know this this show got canceled so where can we beg for another show and can we play a, a house party and can we bring our you know giant like uh uh um, U-Haul trailer full of like sound equipment and just like 
blow the place out and cops show up and going like it's really loud man and it's like yeah it's because we brought in like half of a sound company system on on the road with us and took, put it in someone's living room you know and just had like the mixing board and everything and it's like if people saw the you know the show of their lives i remember like we played in phoenix one night um that uh um it was really funny that Firehose were touring at the same time. And I still have never met Mike Watt to this day, but like I know I've heard him like that he wants to meet all the DC people and he's friends with a lot of the DC punk people and stuff and all that. But yet, like, it's like his band was touring at the same time we were and our show got canceled because they went and put on a show with Firehose in uh, Phoenix University, or Tucson. And uh, so that day we put together a house party we went and made up these like DIY like uh, Xerox flyers and all on the flyers like to this day Mike must know about it he probably gets a kick out of it because he probably thinks that's pretty fucking bold that's pretty cool we to do this but we put on the side of the flyer in big letters like don't go to, to fire hose you know <laughs> and then we tell people on the campus we were telling all the college kids who were like those guys don't need your money and whatever like they're, they're on SST and whatever like we're starving you know, we're like fucking uh, dying out here and stuff. Like, come to see us at this house party. And then we played this house party, and that was when Robert Bowers, the guy from uh, the old basis from the inbred from Morgantown, West Virginia, toured with us, and he was like our roadie, our driver, our sound man, whatever. And we got tired of, like, sounding like Josie and the Pussycats on the road and everything with a PA, like, that just sounded weak, you know, everywhere we went. So we, like, brought our own PA with us in a U-Haul trailer, and we lost our ass doing it, but we sounded good. Sounded really fucking good, cool. and uh, so that's that's just crazy hearing those guys talk. I'm like going, wow, if only we were that like organized back then, in the '80s. Either the '80s, man. Yeah, yeah, in the but, '80s. But you, uh, you, you set Speaking the ground. Of you Captain put the <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah. What a segue. Um, <laughs> I've already, I've already, I've already like uh, posted like the other day that I uh, that I was like definitely going to do my own rendition of like uh, of, of of their of their hit, but call it "Drugs Will Keep Us Together," and it's all about it's dedicated to like, and it's not dedicated to like you know it's not all about like you know people getting all wasted like it's like uh you know it's it's like you know not. The Cheech and Chong song or whatever rendition or whatever or something or the uh, oh yeah that that's a little too far over most kids' heads these days. Um, <laughs> but they were like guys that smoked a lot of weed and uh, and they got really fucked up and like but they're not uh, Harold and Kumar. Um, <laughs> but uh, they were definitely the uh, the the sort of like re rehash version of like Cheech and Chong. It's an actual great movie. The Harold and Kumar go to. White Castle, but uh, <laughs> but I decided to do a song like kind of dedicated to the fact of uh, that I was I was pretty bummed uh, to hear about Robin Williams, and I, I mean I always admired his work, admired his like his comic stuff and whatever and all that and everything, and I think like in the long run it's like you know like chemical imbalance, man, it can totally just fuck you up and then just like make you do things that like you know not even thinking about your family or whatever. I mean it's like. It sucks, and, uh, you know, it's like I've known people who definitely committed suicide and definitely have been, like, really fucked up and OD'd or whatever, and um, and I, I even know of someone, like, uh, uh, someone in their family that has, like, a daughter that, like, you know, is she's tried to commit suicide several times, and she's, like, still in high school, but she's got this really just crazy chemical imbalance, and she's got, you know, she doesn't want to do anything to, like, hurt her family or whatever or this and that, but she's there's times where she's, like has to be locked up because she can't control herself and it's like really fucked up but uh so i, I kind of wanted to do a my own version that was like um that was dedicated to like uh, uh medication to like like depression medication and anger medication because i take i take my paxil and i know some people that take like adderall and whatever and like you know lithium prozac whatever uh and there's even like a uh my housemate would used to give his like big big fat uh, wired like uh, hyper cat like this little kitty Prozac to like calm it down a bit and stuff and I'm like oh I, I couldn't do that to mine but um, uh, I'll just let him be all hyper and go crazy and tear up the place and stuff and whatever but uh, so I, I, I wanted to originally I was telling Eric that I wanted to cover um, this song that me and Dave Smalley did that uh, I did with a band called Jason and the Cupids and we did it called we did we did Captain Tennille's like Muskrat Love, but called it Mohawk Love, and like um, 
unfortunately that's not piped in anywhere on the little like you know sing along with like karaoke online or whatever or something so yeah, that was with dave smalley yeah we did it with dave smalley like awesome. i i told him i i it was funny because it, it, it's um it's in the book um this book that have you heard about it or i, I don't know if you guys had had those guys the authors of the uh notice no slam dancing um no stage diving no spikes oral history of the I don't uh know if we've had uh, legendary, we legendary city gardens we were trying to get them on it's a great book i mean but it's like there's a piece in this book that Smalley talks about, like he said, oh, like, yeah. yeah, we were always good friends. I'd known John Stabb from way back and all that. And when we, uh, awesome. we played a show with them at City Gardens with all, and, uh, it was all, um, it was, uh, hard ons and, um, I forget what the other band was, but, but just in general, like we wanted to do something really unique and different. So he was like, yeah, let's go out there and do some crazy song or whatever or something. And I wrote on a pizza box, like all these like goofy lyrics about, then I remembered I did this thing called Mohawk Love as a joke, and I had to like like the whole like Mohawk Susie, Mohawk Sam, like listen to punk rock and doing the slam and whatever, and like and and me and Smalley got up and did it in dresses and in, in front of like we got borrowed some like friends, we borrowed some girlfriends like dresses and whatever and put on some skirts and whatever and like and and then we were like we got up there and did it like totally like just like improv. And it was really a mess, but kids were all into it and everything, because I think that, like, we didn't give ourselves enough time to practice it. I was saying, like, oh, we need to rehearse this longer. You know, we're up in the dressing room, in the hall dressing room, up in uh, city gardens and everything, and it's like, but we just went for it. And it's in that book. He talks about it and everything. But, like, uh, it's uh, one day, one day, like, you know, maybe we'll actually get it right. But, uh, but tonight I definitely want to do, and I, I didn't know if... Uh, and then since I wrote all the lyrics that I would be singing on uh, on the Facebook, on the face, or as Ian calls it, the book, the, the book. He goes, I don't go on the book. It's like, not my thing, man. It's a gated community. It's like, you know, they, they totally have like room for some people and not room for others. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I go on the book. That's okay for me. Um, I made a lot of connections and my, my now, like, plus 2,000 friends line up or whatever with like people all across the country and Europe and whatever and stuff like it's just cool to be finally in touch with like tons and tons of people that were like they were way back and they were fans of band or they were uh, they were people that played with us years ago and they put up pictures and talk about their memories and stuff and whatever and it's like that's that's the thing I get I get more of a, a, a more of a kick out of and stuff like when people are come up to me like a, the singer for Crudos came up to me at Damage City Fest and at the table and he was like oh are you gonna wear any Paisley tonight because he remembers like all the Paisley crazy psychedelic stuff I used to wear in like California and I'm like no no I got something wild and I said I got some Donny Osmond you know and it's like but the kids didn't get that at all like I said it was just really funny but uh so I put the lyrics up there for people that want to sing along with uh with drugs will keep us together and uh <laughs> you want to roll it yeah I'm ready here we go all right drugs Drugs will keep us together Think of my meds whenever Some sweet talking rage comes along Singing the song Don't mess around Don't grab a bomb Just stop I really drug you Stop, stop. Thinking of you Look at my dropping cart and let drugs you, you belong to me now Ain't gonna set you free now When that depression's hanging around Breaking me down Let no looking part And you'll stop feeling down Stop Stop you Stop I'm thinking of you Look in my card and let drugs keep us together. Whatever. Oh man, pitiful. 
someday your drugs will be gone and the others turn you off who will be turning you on i will i will i will i will there there forever drugs will keep us together said it before and i'll say it again others pretend i'll need you now and i'll need you then just stop Thinking of you, look at my cart and my drugs, keep us together. Neil needed their medication. You think of the drug in you? Keep us together. Prozac for me, motherfucker. Keep me straight. Yeah. My voice is a little hoarse tonight. <laughs> little horsey. Wilbur. Uh. Because I've been dealing with like cleaning out sheds and like whatever and stuff, and it's all dusty and everything. But I did my best. We appreciate it. It was your yeah. cowboy voice, man. You're doing. 1970s, yeah. you know, Earth song. Cowboy. Too. I don't know if this is going to pipe in, but, like, uh, it's funny, my, my guitarist in my band, History Repeated, says, like, man, I can't believe the batteries have not worn out for this thing yet. I have this thing, this is the Ghost Lookout game card from Blockbuster. You hear it? I think yeah. I have that little toy. This is... That's awesome. It's horror. I, I have that. Is it piping through? Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's working good. I could say, like, this is my cat's, like, little mouse. How about a mouse? <laughs> In 3D. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> have another mouse toy. All right. Um, I brought nice. that in when I do the GI Talk and Twang gigs. Like, um... Basically, I put it in there with like a uh, like a song like um, uh, "Man the Trap." Like at the end of it, like I, I just pipe that in and start rocking with the uh, with the ghost card. That's pretty, yeah. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, learning my tricks with the board and stuff so we can reduce the sound and hear you better. So I turn the mics off when you're talking. Cool. Yeah, that's why it probably sounded pretty quiet there. Yeah. So we, we, I definitely heard some quiet. I was like going, uh oh, crickets <laughs> again. <laughs> no, it's okay, man. Hey, like I stand on the stage of the front of all those kids and being like, uh, is it over somebody's head? Uh, joke's not working tonight? Uh, whatever. And I was like, so I did the ultimate Jack Grisham thing. I said, like, uh, crickets? And people were like laughing. They got that. But like, and I remember the guy, the guy from Infest, the one guy in the band, Infest, actually, like, he really dug us, and he got the whole joke. I mean, we were kind of sloppy, and we are punk rock, and we are doing the old hardcore thing, and it's like, and, uh, and, and he said that, um, you know, like, he, he totally thought that was really cool, but one kid wrote about us and said that, like, like GI is a band of, uh, of um, uh, a group of men, an old group of men who like to... Uh, torture their audience and themselves. And I'm like, oh, cool. Right? You can't get better than that. But, like, he was actually not into it. He goes, they tried to be, like, performance art and everything. And it was, like, performance art. It was just, like, kind of ridiculous that me and my uh, my girlfriend decided, like, during Sheer Terror of all songs that we were going to come out and do some really weird, wacky thing. Because it's, like, that's the perfect song for that. And uh, so she, she got all dressed up and um, put on a big hoodie and had written on the back of the hoodie, like, Knitting Crew, like, Triple X, 
like you know which i thought was awesome and then she put on this like woman chants like mask or whatever this like uh this this like japanese mask and had it over the hoodie so it looked kind of really weird and creepy and she was knitting during the whole song she was like doing her yoko ono thing it was like and people like you know they didn't get it at all like it was just like it's a goof man but uh, Ian actually told my friend Ian saw me at Fort Reno Park a show recently, and he said, "Oh man, I finally saw that footage of that whole video of like the GI show you, you guys did and everything, and that was that was really impressive, man. That's like I'm amazed that you like you know you could you know pull that off." And I said, "Yeah, but the thing is, like, I'm wearing a Donny Osmond shirt, and I'm like." telling jokes about things from like the 80s and then people are like not getting it at all and he goes yeah man that's because you're like you're the old punk rocker and they're kids man you know and it's like yep yep true true <laughs> get a little heartburn tonight john <laughs> <laughs> it's all good man <laughs> hey, hey uh if i could i'd give you one of these right now Oh, yeah. uh, that's all right. These are delicious. I, I, I can't drink beer to save my life, man. I hate the taste of beer. Oh, well, I think I... I that's I why I like fruity, girly drinks. I had mine tonight. I had a few with my with my girlfriend. I had my strong, fruity, girly drinks with rum. Um, right. Yeah. Hey, John, will you say hi? Somebody out there named Dick wants to say hi. Will you say hi to Dick? Sure. Say hi, Dick. Hey, Dick. What's up? There you go. Nice. Oh, Richard. <laughs> yes, <hey. laughs> Um... You may sometimes be called. <laughs> what? What do you uh? Cussing the guy out or giving him shit? No, no. It... Dick. <laughs> What's going on, man? Yo, oh, Dick. Yo, Dick. Yeah, yeah I just, I'm some Dick from some humans, was we, it? We ain't dicking him around. No, I think it's uh, Dick from the Crucifix. Yeah. Oh Crucifix. boy. Yeah, but uh. A doc Dart. Yeah. 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 So uh. What, have you been to any shows? I mean, have you caught any bands? Is it um, yeah, yeah. Like, um, even my band history repeated. We're going on the um, we're going on a University of Maryland like third rail radio. Like they do this radio show, and we haven't been on there in about a couple of years or whatever. And like, we're doing a little thing there um, this Saturday. Um, that, that's eighty eight point one, like WMUC, and they 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 basically archive it and they put it up online for like people to hear and stuff and check out. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun. It's this Saturday night, and um, and we're playing with this one friend of mine's band. Um, his new project he put together called SparkleBot, and uh, this friend of mine named John Horde, who actually really oddly enough like ended up playing with people like uh, that played in GI at one point, like Pete Pete Moffat. He played in a band with him at one point, and uh, uh, after GI broke up, and um, also uh, Steve Hanskin, and. Um, they're just a really cool band, and they, they recently did a did a uh, three song CD EP that uh, in uh, James Robbins' studio, Magpie Cage in Baltimore, big big fancy studio and a great place. And um, so we're going on the air and doing that thing this Saturday, and uh, they were playing this thing like I've been telling people about in Akatik, Maryland, which is like not anywhere near like you know I don't know. Uh, near Timonium or like places like you know that, that have like the mattress discount warehouses or something you know like in like crazy days but um and we're playing this thing called the cheap beer fest which okay. um which is like this all day party and then night thing and it goes from like four o'clock to like whenever and it's always free and it's on August 30th on like the you know Labor Day and whatever and uh we're playing with this one band um friends of mine um Nathan uh, Nathan Straycheck who used to be in uh, Teen Idols and and uh, Youth Brigade uh he now plays uh just plays uh bass um in this one band he doesn't do any more vocals and stuff he does like the Youth Brigade shows and whatever like once in the blue moon like he did the thing at Cool Disco Dan and 9:30 Club last year and stuff but uh he's in a band with some friends of mine um uh, Phil and uh, and Sean and they're in a, they're called the Delarcos and they're gonna be playing with a guy Jimmy Recca um, who Sean actually he's a DJ as well on WMUC and he's an old friend of mine he's always like helping out the underdogs of like rock and whatever and punk rock and everything and he like you know he'll he'll support and like try to get a gig or go go support like someone like you know he's like eh, that guy was the original singer for acdc way before you know bon scott or something and like okay sure but uh this guy jimmy recca he's made a connection with him and he, he used to be the uh, stooges bassist on one of their tours 
So he's going to get up there, and they're probably going to do some Stooges songs with him. And uh, then there's other people, like Guy that used to be in the Slicky Boys, Marshall Keith, uh, the old guitarist, fantastic guitarist. And, um, um, and there's a friend of mine named uh, Monsters from the Surf. They're an amazing band. They're just like a band that basically gets up there and plays like really intense, like everything from like Agent Orange and like Ramonesy kind of stuff and a lot, a lot of covers, a lot of like, you know, really oddball uh, beach, like uh, instrumental covers and stuff and whatever and all that, as well as, well as some punk rock type stuff. And, um, and my friends, the tail draggers. And so we're doing that, but, um, but actually in uh we're, we're finally going to take it on the road and go to like other, other than uh, ocean city, which we we're just at like recently. And that, video was like piped in that um i hope it came across or whatever uh on online that i gave to eric um that uh we're gonna go play in brooklyn um with a couple bands out there and stuff uh, this band called even twice and whatever and a place called the gutter which apparently is a is a bowling alley but it's a really cool bowling alley and i was like sure we'll play bowling alleys we'll play like supermarket openings or whatever like you know dog shows uh, i'd love to see you doing something like that man I'd yeah, love to, yeah i'd actually like to actually see you almost doing an advertisement for something oh sure you know pushing some dairy product <laughs> i would do it i would do uh, if it was soy milk i would go for it i would support it because i i drink like uh rice soy type stuff or whatever or something do, like, you, but, do you get a milk mustache from it since it's soy <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but I, if I get a milk mustache man people are going to think I'm doing gay porn or something you know? like, <laughs> I'll, I'll get that like immediately someone will pipe put it out someone will post it like on like uh, on like YouTube or whatever or like a, a, a picture on, on online and like people were like uh, all of a sudden back in like you know way back in the 80s would go like I knew it John Stab is gay. He's always been gay and stuff. And like, so it's like, whatever. No. Hey. Milk mustache. Milk mustache. <laughs> I think we played with those guys once too in, in like uh, Connecticut, I think. Yeah, John, we're going to have to get you down here one of these days, man. Down yeah, here definitely Florida, want to come man. down soon, man. Yeah, I mean. That'd be awesome. I, I'd say here, but you're probably better off going to Drebs. But oh, yeah? If, if Drebs got a place for you to crash. Oh, I thought you were just talking about the studio. I didn't know if you had a home studio in your place, too. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much chaos, but who knows? I might be able to fix it up. But Nice. <laughs> well, this looks like a new background you guys have. Like, what are you, like, going for, like, the whole, like, Lord of the Rings thing or something or whatever? <laughs> I uh I'm I was trying to get it to a theme where I could change it every week and stuff, but uh -huh. you know uh, within budget, you know it's it, it's right. little, it's not really expensive, but there's other things that came up, so you know we're still doing the costume props and stuff, and you know maybe in the the going into our first year after we do uh, in September it'll be one year. Oh wow, nice. Yeah, so man. thank you. And, yeah, uh, this whole background is either like you're in you're a, you know you're in like in a in a goth country industrial band or something or or you're uh or or basically that that um it just looks like something you know something from like a death metal record or something like yeah we can yeah. do that i have another one uh if you saw on the skype page it's all of us it's mike brandon uh -huh. and drab and we're in front of uh like it looks like in cemetery gates and stuff I, I'm trying to get this other one where it's a space shuttle crash into a sand dune. It looks pretty nice. cool. You know, the best part is, is I never even yeah. realized what the hell was even behind me until somebody said something. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't even really pay attention to it. I know what's going on back here because he's got all these posters, but he's had something different behind me a couple times. Yeah, oh, he's got wow. posters over here. That's awesome. like, what? Wait, what the hell is behind yeah. me? Oh, this is kind of special. I have that one on my wall, too. There's, it's uh, there's mounted. But, uh, there's macaroni art. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, that nice. that is a macaroni murder lady. That uh, it was Eric's birthday yesterday, and uh, my girlfriend made him a macaroni murder lady. It's like a crime scene made out of noodles and uh, fake blood. She isn't a serial murderer, is she? She does this actually for most of our friends' birthdays, so Eric should feel uh, honored <laughs> to make it. She's she's made multiples for people, and some of nice. them are kind of. As long as there's no like little like you know like bird 
skulls and bones and there's stuff mixed up in there. Different and things, yeah. Hey, Brandon's girlfriend's <laughs> name. Brandon. There's a bullet in that one. There's a lighter. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a couple other things, too. Hey, John. <laughs> yeah. Brandon's girlfriend's name is Kitty, and your girlfriend's name is Meow Meow. That's pretty cool, huh? Yes, yeah, that's, me, that's Meow Girl. <laughs> yep. <Yeah>. Cool. <laughs> nice. Funny. Yeah. Very nice. Brandon does uh, some uh, promoting down here, so maybe we, we got to figure out a way to get you down here, like I was saying. <laughs> you know, so. Oh, we'd love to definitely play down there. That would be really cool. Then get on the air and do the thing and stuff. Yeah, have you down here, and we'll do a barbecue and stuff, and maybe we'll uh, do some square dancing out in the front yard. <laughs> yeah, you got to throw some lettuce on the grill, so, as, uh, and then Ian will show up, too, because um, we're both vegetarians. You're not a vegetarian, are you? Oh, hell yeah. So oh. is my, my girlfriend's vegetarian. I've so. been a vegetarian for like 30, like 30 plus years now, or whatever, like, and it was, I was just telling the guy I was working with today, like, the, the, this guy, um, uh, Steve the Priest, um, it's his real name, um... He, uh, like, uh, I was saying it was really pretty tough to be a vegetarian in the 80s, that's for sure. Like, I was junk food vegetarian on GI tours. It was like, okay, another pizza and more nachos. Yeah. You know, and stuff like, because, like, you know, you get, you know, down the line, we finally got to a point where we actually could say, like, must provide meal. Like, yeah. give us food or whatever or something on a, on a contract or whatever and say, like, so they, they just, like, you know, you go through, like, you're writing up on the on the top of the van, like, uh, Detroit, Michigan, like pizza number 175. You know, it's like, oh, no more fucking pizza. You know, so yeah. next time we like had on a, on our tour, a tour rider, we like wrote down like must provide meal, no pizza with a big exclamation point. I have and, to say, when I was just out with the murder junkies, we ate pizza in every town. I mean, it really? didn't matter. Yep. It was somebody, somebody from the group ate pizza. In whatever city it was, Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, everywhere, there was right. pizza. Didn't matter, you know. Even if they weren't given that, they searched it out. It was weird. I I thought when I would go on tour, fuck, I wouldn't want pizza every night because that's yeah. what people give yeah. you. But they actively looked for pizza that was good Jeez. in every city. I don't know. I mean, I guess when you start, well, when you start off tour and you eat it and then you don't like it, but I guess when you're right. at that point, they're like, fuck it, you know. I've had pizza this many times in that town. I know it's good. I don't know. That's sad, know, man. man. That's really fucking sad. I mean, like, the guy was saying, like, couldn't you give us, like, a little rice and vegetables? Right. And I was like, so, yeah, the next time they give us, like, Chinese food or, like, just nice. give us some cash and say, like, you can order whatever you want. Like, you know, it's like it's it's not going to be fucking Domino's death discs. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, so you were on tour with Murder Junkies? I just drove the Murder Junkies around for 30 days, yeah. Wow. I did their tour. I, I left from Florida with Sonny, the guitar player. Uh, uh -huh. I actually play with him in a Kevin K band. Um, he wanted me to drive him up to New York to meet the guys, and Merle right. Freeman, they started the tour in New York, and we did 30 days all the way back down to St. Pete. Were they, like, a scary bunch of people to tour with, or this pretty um, mellow? Or? Well, I mean, I can tell Not you like that... like Gigi's brother is anything like him. Pretty, pretty much anything that could happen, happened. happened. It didn't do any of Gigi antics, like I set mean, someone's legs on fire or something well, or whatever. Like in I can say <laughs> some of the stuff I can't talk about, but right. I mean, there was sticks of dynamite in Detroit. That was fun. Jesus. Um, that like quarter sticks of dynamite. Uh, in New York, we uh, I actually went out to dinner with somebody that won the New York lottery, and they took us out for this big steak dinner, and we're all dressed like right, right. horribly from tour. I smelled, my hair was yeah. up, my mohawk, you know. They took us out, and we ended up eating this, like, $900 dinner, and then that night we slept outside wow. Grand Central Station with nowhere to sleep wow. on the ground until it opened again. So it's like Crazy. everything that could happen on tour with them happened, man. There was Jeez. four broken noses I can tell you about. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was crazy. Wow. But unlike Gigi, they, no one got, like, uh, arrested for, like, credit card fraud well, trying to no, get there was, money there, out of a most machine to go see Rolling Stones to throw shit at them or something. Up, yeah, there was one police officer that I was in the back of the van, and he's like, we got a... a report of a suspicious van in this neighborhood and they asked who I was and it was my van and I was driving yeah. them and it was legit. I mean, that was the only cop that really gave us a, a wow. problem. 
So, yeah. I mean, I did get to shoot a... Saying, like, hey, you got a license to throw poop at the people? I did get to shoot a porno with Dino, the drummer. <laughs> oh, no. And a 24-year-old. He was 60 years old on the tour he turned, and he got a 24-year-old, and we shot oh. six hours worth of porno. Oh. Six hours. That sounds like, you know, the Crypt Keeper. It was, dude, it was keeper, great. Like, making it with someone or something. You know, he's like... actually got a porno out. His uh, his first one, he was real young, and uh, <laughs> and they sell it at the shows. They sell it at the shows. It's <laughs> making me, like, ill. God. Hey. Uh, you know, honestly, I t- I've taken out I've the Chrome Mags. I've tolerance for, like, I've, even I've taken out the Chrome Mags before. Like, oh. I've taken out Murphy's Law before. And those yeah. bands were nothing compared to the Murder Junkies. It was a little different. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. You know, Chrome Mags, you wake up and they want to work out in the morning and they're vegan right. and they eat, you know, great food. And, and then, you know, I go out with the Murder Junkies and they want to go to McDonald's, you know, three times a day. Uh, so uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's yeah. an interesting bunch, you know. I I cleaned up Dino's puke in a bathtub in somebody's house. <laughs> man, <laughs> he's like naked walking around their house, man. It's no! a great tour. It was a great tour. He has breasts. He has gorilla was, boobs. Yeah. <laughs> it, no, it was it was great though, man. It, if I had to pick one band to go out with to see the craziest shit ever, it probably would have been them. I mean, Ugh, if I could have wow. gone out with the Dwarves or Meat Men or something, I might have seen some crazy shit too. But sure, uh, sure. I've heard too. about some of that stuff. Definitely <laughs> crazy. Yeah. yeah. About the craziest stuff that ever happened on a GI tour is like we we were invited to like you know by by DI after a show or something to go hang out with a bunch of. Uh, a bunch of like chicks and like you know in their condo and like party and whatever but they're like no we're gonna go back to this place and and do laundry and have a fight to eat and stuff you know it's like we were like the cleanest band in hardcore like you know like you have like a sink you have like a shower or something whatever and like we'll do your dishes whatever and stuff like we were on the crazy radical band that like some people are like yeah throwing TVs out the window of a motel room. It's like we were like yeah. so grateful if we got to even sleep on a motel floor or something or share beds or whatever. It's like because like we had like maybe three motel rooms out of like entire nine years of being in a band or something. And it's like, but man, that was like the best. You know, it's like in room movies. I got to watch like Emmanuel at like three in the morning and stuff. And the rest of the band's like, can you turn that off, man? I'm like, no, I have to see this. I have to. I've heard about Emmanuel Joys of a Woman. I have to see this. I know it's softcore, but like you know, it's porn on inline porn, in room porn. <laughs> but uh, so so to Merle is in Murder Junkies, right? Yeah, Merle. Honestly, that guy he he knows what he's doing. You know, can yeah. say the crazy stuff about the tour, but at the same time, we knew where we were going, how uh-huh. it was handled. Everything was a hundred percent on key. So really, it was good, man. Because when I toured in a band called Stab, and it was like 91, we played Muskegon, Michigan, okay. which is just a fucking nightmare of a place to probably live. But, uh, you know, I, I was in touch with, like, one pen pal girl. Sorry, uh, Muskegon. Thing that her brother, like, used to, he used to, like, have, like, a split personality. Her little brother was, like, talking about that it, he would tell her, like, my right hand wants to kill you tonight and stuff or whatever. And it was just like, whoa, what does the left hand want to do? I, I don't know, but, like... But uh, um, we played his little like uh, his little garage space or whatever, and um, I was like, I could go on, you know, and finally tell people like, you know, my claim to fame is I played Gigi Allen's brother's like, uh, you know, little garage or something or whatever his right. club. Yeah, you know, honestly, I mean, I watched, that was weird. I watched Merle sell everything down to the shirt he wore the entire tour at a show, <laughs> the pants he wore pair of shoes that he wore the entire tour he had nothing left that he was really? wearing except for one outfit when he got on the plane this is cat astrophy decided to show up crazy yeah there's a there was a cat right here too oh, yeah i saw that attack me. that's that's g <laughs> i named my cat gg by the way oh <laughs> <laughs> fling his poop at you <laughs> it it smells he doesn't do too much with it though oh. he he doesn't play any see, here he's hanging out now there you can you see him let's see ah uh, nice there's another kitty up there, boy. Oh, oh, oh. hell yeah, Let's man! See. Well, uh, talking my boy was in his sleep mode. He was like, "Oh, pay attention to me, Papa. Pay yeah. attention." I, I, I All have, right. I have a rabbit. <laughs> I have a rabbit that I found running down the street in Clearwater, right. busy intersection. 
And uh, uh, the people left them in the yard and whatnot. I ended up keeping a rabbit. And I bought a little harness for a chihuahua. And it's and I harness them and I take them for walks. Oh, well, nice. Well, nice. I, My boy this, definitely goes out and walks yeah, in a I harness have, and a leash. I have this very loud. Out on a leash. I have this very loud Puerto Rican New York guy that lives two doors down with a tiny right. little chihuahua. And my rabbit wanted to beat that. Oh, he would chase that dog. It was fucking hilarious. My oh, rabbit, rabbits definitely are pretty My, pretty my rabbit's little. bigger than one of my cats. Yeah, and he was yeah. about three times the size of his chihuahua. And there I am. And, he's and they start hopping around oh, and flipping God, out was in, the, in the house hilarious. space. Man, that's I, can't, like... I can't have uh, rabbits or cats because uh, oh. my dog would just eat all of them yeah i can't yeah there's no way i can't i, I can't my cat will stand up to any dog uh you know size shape whatever or something it's like they could be the biggest fucking doberman or whatever and he just like put up his bulldog front and go like yeah you want to fuck with me i want to like, find no, no, i don't want to mess with you I, you're not backing down my That's old weird. cat meathead used to do that i had a cat yeah. a white cat meathead and oh. <clears throat> he would uh he uh, t- you got to attack example, Rob Reiner at all and on the family? Yeah, somewhat, because when I got him, he was all white, and he used yeah. to go underneath this fence where there was this cactus, and his head got ripped up. Oh. It, it was bald. And uh, So, uh, you know, and he would come. He, I ran him over with my truck one time, and he survived. And uh, then I had this uh, 13-foot African rock python, and it got, out of, the, got out of the cage. And I come home, and Ooh. I seen my cat, and he was bleeding from the bottom of him. Oh. And he seen me, and I, then I looked down, and I seen a snake slithering into my bedroom. Oh, man. And I thought he was going to have to put him down. He survived that, man. Right. And uh, I was like, well, I'm keeping this guy. And then I moved to this new place. The guy had a pit bull, and the pit bull came after him, and he jumped right on top of him and grabbed, jumped right onto his head and just dug <laughs> in. <laughs> man. <laughs> Tough man. cat, man, but real nice. Real nice yeah. cat. Real cool cat. 18 wow. years. He lived for 18 wow. years. A uh, friend of mine has a, a cat that uh, lived through a gator. He got the better half of the gator. Really? No shit, man. No yeah. shit. Really? Yeah, you're going to have to come down and check out all these little Florida things that you you know, you know just see on uh, That's crazy. Mutual of Omaha and stuff, John. I'll have to take you out. You know, uh, will you if will you eat some fish if we catch fish? Uh, I if they're go- if the, if they're uh, you know. Was it candy goldfish or whatever or something? No, I can't eat fish. No, I can eat goldfish cookies okay. or crackers. Okay, or well, we're gonna yeah. have to do something, John. We're gonna have to do something. How about if I get you some all the Vegas- restaurants down there that do the fake meat thing? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. there's places. There's places I've run into that have like the whole like, oh, this is like a ch- like vegan chicken or whatever or hey. something and whatever and it's like and I, I like fine I'll eat that I'll whatever take you, and stuff but uh, it's I, weird that like sometimes even like fake and bacon or like the like total or, like, I have, or like yeah that's that some of those things like actually taste pretty meaty to me and stuff but I'm like okay just you know don't tell me it's meat you know don't tell me I can, I'll eat this shit and whatever but I, I definitely can't eat fish and can't eat bird and 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 cow and pig whatever mm-hmm. yeah. hey i got vegan burgers at my work hey nice. so actually i'm i'm on your uh i'm on your page here looking through some uh-huh. some stuff with your band you know i listened to you when i was younger and i you know i'm just uh-huh. kind of looking through everything here when was the last time you guys actually played um like i said it was on um, the show about uh Maybe three months ago or so, it was the thing that damaged City Fest, but it was the original GI lineup from 1980. Yeah, uh, guys from Legless Bowl. And um, because I just decided, like, I wanted to put a show together with the original lineup and do some of the old hardcore stuff. And, uh, but the other guys, like, a couple years ago, you know, we did those benefit type shows and, and the Salad Days thing, which is like a, um, a lot of bands did that, like Youth Brigade did that, and Scream, and um, and uh, uh, Marginal Man, and whatever. Um, it was uh, they were basically helping out um, a friend of ours, Scott Crawford, is still working on this documentary um, called Salad Days, and I don't know if you've seen clips of it and everything, whatever. It's going to be a really cool DC punk documentary. There's three in the making right now, and I think that. Uh, hey, I would uh, if you could maybe offline introduce me some of the that are into that and oh, yeah definitely do, do something like that i will definitely scott will definitely promote it and everything i told him i said 
Do you ever go around and do like the whole like circuit, like, you know, like film, like screening thing or whatever? I'd love to go up there and like talk, you know, whatever. I'm like part of the documentary and stuff and whatever. Uh, you know, I have a few things to say definitely about those days and whatever and like love to tour with it. Like, you know, even like do the local thing or whatever. But there are three different ones being made. There's one called Punk the Capital, which is um, some friends of mine are doing that, uh, that one has a lot of Super 8 footage that they've kind of like worked out in their documentary. It looks really cool. It looks very raw and whatever and different. They're just working that all together and stuff. And, um, and the Salad Days thing is like, um, it's been, they've been working on their thing for a while. And there's a Positive Force documentary coming out soon. Um, so like finally DC and um, the old punk rock scene and whatever and all that in the 80s and stuff is finally going to get its like, get its day or like your night to see or whatever i mean like i always thought like when decline came out years ago it's like yeah dc should have put out like their own thing like their own concert documentary or whatever it would have been like you know, instead of like the up decline of western civilization it'd be like the like the uh you know the upswing of like you know eastern civilization or whatever or something you know it's like we weren't like a bunch of people like like in bands that were like really really fucked up and 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 just like you know like looking at decline and going like oh fuck Darby Crash and all that stuff whatever it's like you know guys making breakfast like you know and dropping eggshells in his plate and everything it's like uh, you know that's it not good okay good we will wrap it up sorry about that John I got a I got a guest Go going it. on up here um, I want you back man you're yeah, always definitely welcome love here to come man. Back. man. Uh, we could talk to you forever, man. You know, you you, you know I was that. Just keep asking sure, questions. Sure. <laughs> I forgot you got other people you got to talk to. Yeah, we, we, I go for it. You got to get those guys on. Yeah, we uh, yeah, got, I definitely want to talk to you again. Yeah, we yeah, got. Yeah, man, definitely want to talk to you again. Did, you you were with Mystic. Uh, I mean, I got a few minutes. I want to. I just want getting letting you know. Um, you were yeah, with, like the old repute guys. Yeah, man, we got Carl the Drummer. Uh, from Elmer Pitt, he's going to be coming up next. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Oh, like, good. What they got to say and stuff, and I know that they're working on their own, like, or is it book or documentary or yeah, something? Yeah, it already came out, man, and uh, oh, cool. maybe, maybe I can find a way of getting it up to you, man, because uh, I, I right. definitely, I definitely, it's it's good, man. I haven't played any of it tonight. I don't know if I have time to, but I, right, I might right. be able to, actually, sure. I'll talk to you offline, and I'll make sure you can see it, okay? Cool, cool. Um, uh, tell tell those guys I said my uh, send my uh, my my not regrets but I send my my hellos to them or whatever and um, make sure that your cat doesn't like uh, if its name is Gigi make sure like if you have guests over tell them like look man you know like the cat might uh... you, you can't do that kind of shit in front of my guests and everything it's like play a cool show you know don't don't do all that shit on the walls and stuff and whatever and everything it's like. You know, like like the original GG. Like hopefully yeah, he doesn't like you know. Don't do that anymore though. Yeah, they don't. They drink a whole bottle of milk of magnesia <laughs> and a, a bottle of Jack Daniels and starts like throwing his shit out shit there everywhere. and people and stuff. It's well, like, oh no. You know, but that's you know that's what almost thirty years ago. Can you believe yeah. that, man? It's Can, crazy. Yeah. Do you remember what you were doing thirty years ago, John? Um, I think I was in the bathroom. Okay. Um, but uh, enough of that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get you get on these toilet games, you know, because last time we talked to you, yeah. you happened to have a book about poopy. Remember? Oh yes, I had, <laughs> I had the book. It's like what well, it was the book? Uh, the gas we pass. By, uh, Margaret, uh, was it? Is it Margaret Cho or something? Not Margaret Cho. Sintato or something. It's a great book, all about you know, elephants having gas and people having gas and little cartoons of it and stuff it's nice yeah. no, i can't drink that stuff well i, I know you feel like this with, like, fruit juice that. and stuff like that but like but uh yeah 30 years ago god i was i was probably uh probably trying to stay out of jail now yeah, maybe i uh i've asked up <laughs> a couple of people and i'm gonna ask you yeah do you see yourself in 10 years still singing um probably but um but mostly in a mirror. In a mirror. Mostly in a uh, mirror. Well, maybe, maybe in ten years, John. Hopefully, we know each other still then. Yeah, yeah. And then we maybe, know. maybe we can make something happen where we, by then, the technology be is we get everybody, all your bandmates, in different. Yeah. And then you play 
you play it all, you know, just like we did tonight, kind of. You, oh, well, yeah, definitely. That would be cool. And that was, I, mean, I love the live experience. I love the whole, like, uh, aspect of that. I mean, more than going in the studio and stuff, it's just like I've always, like, loved just going out there and getting a reaction and, like, shaking people up a bit and everything. And it's like, that's why, like, you know, we're doing these GI shows and whatever. And if people, like, they get it, they get it. If they don't, well, we had a fun time doing it. You know, it's like, but go for it. Hey, so I'm going to let you go. That was our next guest. He was just calling us, so i got to wrap it up. And I don't want to crash this call and stuff. John, I will talk to you soon. Brad, great talking to you, man. I just added you on Facebook. We'll we'll, we'll bullshit, man. Have a good night. Yeah, let's do this again. Let's do this again real soon. Seriously, man. Monsters. Seriously, let's do it real (laughs) soon. John, thanks a lot, man. Yeah. Love you, brother. Have a good night. See ya. Cheers. In 3D. (laughs) (laughs) See ya, John. See ya. All right, John Stab, great guest. Love having him on here. Real nice guy. And I'm I'm gonna have to say good night to everybody here. Okay. I I can't stand up anymore. <laughs> all right, all right. So good night, y'all. Good night, Dreb. See everybody out Friday for off. Yeah, I'll talk to yeah. you then. All right, um, I'm gonna close this out. We'll be right back. We're gonna have Carl Valdez from El Repute. So stay tuned. <laughs>